everybody out there in the book first it's stephanie today i'm back with my tbr the first one of 2023 for the month of january i have been kind of struggling with my reading over the past year um really just kind of the end i feel like of 2022 i haven't really been doing that well with my reading uh but the board has been been very nice to me so they it's made it a little bit more doable i am really excited to jump into 2023 and kind of be a little bit more on top of my reading because I do love it and I want this to be a hobby that I continue to enjoy and I feel like sometimes I just can't relax enough to enjoy my reading because of other things that I have going on but in 2023 that's one of my goals is just to be like chill in my reading be able to just kind of enjoy it again love it again and not just be stressed about other things while I'm reading I am excited to see what the board brings to me but first let's talk about how I did with my December TBR if you remember my December TBR really wasn't that bad I had four bucks on it uh the yellow wallpaper was on there for a classic wrath I don't I don't remember what these were on there for Anyways, we have Wrath, The Lost Metal, and Priory of the Orange Tree, as well as Yellow Wallpaper, and I read absolutely none of them. I don't know how I managed that. I don't think I have ever read like zero of the books on a monthly TBR. This is insane. I read like five books last month. I read them all actually while I was on vacation. I read absolutely no books other than the time that I was on vacation. So that's probably has something to do with it, but I read none of the books that were on my TBR. It was an epic fail. Never failed this hard before in my life. So we will not be removing the wormhole that was on the board and we will be adding another one. It's okay. Um, I've accepted this. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We're going to add another one. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do a random number generator, 1 to 34, because that's how many spots are on the board. I did remember this time because I just did it last month. So random number generator to see what spot on the board we are going to be placing the second extra wormhole. So the third wormhole overall, or black hole, sorry, not wormhole, black hole. Black hole means if you hit it, you go back to the beginning, not just back to the last black hole. <sighs> okay. 22. 22. I mm, I don't think I feel that great about that because I think that is two spaces away from the last one because I'm pretty sure the last one was on spot 24. So those are really close together. I don't like that. That makes me feel quite uncomfortable, but you know what? It is what it is. Fingers crossed the board continues to be nice to me because it has been for so many months in a row, but let's be honest, I'm due for a little bit of a rough time. So let's go ahead and grab out a black hole. Um, and we'll put that on spot number 22 and hope for the best. Okay, have the black hole going to number 22, which this is number 24, if I remember right. So 22, those are, ooh, those are really close. Those are really close and I don't like it. I mean, look how close together all of these little swirlies are. Mm, not a fan, but Fingers crossed it goes well. I did bring this upon myself, so let's see how the first roll goes. Roll number one. An eight. Okay, great start. Um, love that. Love starting that way. Let's uh, zip on back to the beginning. Yay. Yay, yay. Okay, so not the greatest start to the game. Hit a wormhole on our very first roll. Love that for us. Um, I'll explain this because I haven't really hit a wormhole in too long. Uh, when I do hit a wormhole, I pull out this wormhole jar. This has all the series that I am in the middle of, and it has ones that I don't necessarily want to continue, and it has ones I'm excited about. I did throw in some as I've started reading them, but it's not 100% up to date, and there definitely could be series in here that I am finished with, um, so we'll see how this goes. There are some thicker ones like Wheel of Time and Stormlight Archive and stuff in here as well. So I'll shake them up a bit. We'll see what we get. I'm hoping it'll be nice to me. I'm hoping it starts off well, but we'll see. Okay. Ready? Got it. Fingers crossed. Let's see, what did we get? Belgariad. Belgariad, yes. I'm 
not mad about that. I was not planning on reading any more in this series quite this early in the year, but you know what? I, I'm not mad about this. Okay, here we go. I found it. Had to go grab it. Belgariad by David Eddings. This is kind of a more classic high fantasy series. We follow this boy who has been raised at this farm and he doesn't really know his history, his background, and we're, he's someone very important to kind of this magical prophecy that has happened. And he's raised by the somewhat by someone called Aunt Paul, who he thinks is his aunt. And you'll learn more as you go along. I, I did enjoy the first book in the series. It wasn't my favorite. I'm not sure how I vibe with the writing style and the character being so young, he is fairly annoying. And a lot of it is centered around the fact that they don't tell him anything and they want to like keep him in the dark because he's so young. Yeah, he makes very obnoxious decisions. So I don't know. I'm hoping that it improves as he ages and we go along in the story, but I am looking forward to it. I will just be reading the next book within it. So this is like a bind up of the first three books in the series. And so I'm going to be continuing on with the second one, which is Queen of Sorcery. So it's not super long. And I think that's a decent start to it. Even though we hit a wormhole, I'm not totally mad about it. I think this is okay. It's okay. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and put Belgariad back into the wormhole jar and we will move on to roll number two. <laughs> okay, roll number two, anything but an eight. Haha, <laughs> 12, love it. Double moon, ooh, I'm not really a fan of that, but I'll take it because it's not a wormhole. So we have a special edition that has a unique magic system. I'm pretty sure I can make that happen. I have a lot of special editions. Okay, for the second roll, I got a double moon and I got special edition and unique magic system. And for this one, I'm, <laughs> I'm adding it to the TBR once again for the third month in a row, Priory of the Orm. You know, I do have the book. Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I am just struggling reading this book. Now you'll say this isn't a special edition. No, it's not. But I have ordered the beautiful special editions from the Broken Binding. So I'm counting it because they are on their way and they're absolutely stunning. I am really excited to read this book. It has dragons and I've heard that it is just beautiful and epic and amazing and I can't wait for it. And I really want to try it out. I'm actually not 100% positive on the magic system in here, uh, but if it is wrong, sorry, my game and I don't know that much about it. So we're going with it and throwing Priory of the Orange Tree on here again. This is kind of a thick one to throw on towards the beginning, but you know what? I really, really want to read it. So I'm taking that chance. Roll number three, a five, okay. Ooh, nice, nice, love it. Let's have you face in the correct direction, little Millennium Falcon. Okay, we get to roll again, and we don't, what don't we want? Five, seven, or 11. Ooh, cool. Five, seven, or 11. <laughs> Five. No. Mm, no. No. Uh, okay. Sad day. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. There. There we go. There we go. Okay. I mean, did we really think we would get through the game without hitting any black holes when there are three of them on the board? I feel like this was expected, this was coming. We did get a comet first though, so that was nice at least. But here we are with the jar once again. We're gonna be drawn out of it, seeing what we get for our black hole pick. I am, I'm not super worried about it. Like I feel like there's quite a few in here that I don't want, but there's so many that I do as well. So, I mean, it could be anything. Let's pick this out. Got it. And we, oh, that's upside down. Yeah, oh, oh yes. 
Oh my gosh, I don't think that it could have been nicer to me. I wasn't really planning on reading this book this month, but I am beyond excited that this is what was picked because it's so short. Okay, just one second. Okay, so the next book in the monstrous graphic novel series is volume seven, Devourer. I absolutely love this graphic novel series. I think it is just so beautiful and it's engaging and it's interesting. The world is super complex. It's very dark though and there is quite a bit of gore and killing so no that going into it but I absolutely adore this. This is about a girl who has these magical dark powers inside of her and there are side like both sides are kind of fighting to try to either control her powers or kill her and I love it. I just think this has the most gorgeous art style. Let me see if I can find like some of it that won't spoil. I mean look at that. It's just absolutely stunning and I'm so excited to continue reading it and I'm also really excited that it's a graphic novel. So it's very short and it's the perfect edition on for my black hole pick. I feel like the game was really mean to give me a black hole but then really nice to give me a graphic novel. So yeah I'm really excited about that. I am very 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 excited to continue on with this series and this is a Christmas present so yay. Here we go again starting over. Mm. Seven. Okay, it's not an eight. Not an eight. We're good. Seven. Okay. We want a star. And for that, I need a book from a book box. Okay, nice. I can do that. Okay, next one, we got a star. And for that, the prompt is book box. Now I'm kind of stretching this a little bit, I know. But I'm going to read Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This is the sequel to Ninth House, which I read right when it came out pretty much and absolutely loved. I think that is such a great book. It's one of my favorite dark academia books. So I'm so excited to continue on with this. And it's not necessarily a book box that came in the monthly subscription, but I did I am planning on getting these special editions that I, Illumicrate is making. So this will be coming from a bookish box. I'm kind of stretching these prompts this month. I don't know what's wrong with me, but yes, that is how I am going to be interpreting this one. I'm really looking forward to jumping back into this world. I absolutely loved the first one. I thought it was so much fun, so entertaining and engaging. It's set at Yale. We have these kind of ghost esque magics that are used. It's very dark and I, I just can't wait to jump in. The first one is a little bit of kind of a murder mystery and I don't really know what we're going to be doing with the second one except I think it might involve a certain character that had some certain unfortunate things happen in the first book. So yeah really really looking forward to this one so definitely had to fit it onto the list. I think it comes out January 10th if I'm not mistaken. Kind of roll number two-ish. Not really, but kind of. Eleven. I think that'll be safe. I can't quite remember, but I think we're good. Ooh, almost a free spot. It's okay though. I'll take another star. This one is a mood read. Yes, best prompt ever. Okay, for the next roll, we got another star and this one's prompt is mood read, which means I can pick any book that I want to read throughout the month and just mood read it. I don't have to pick a book right now. However, I'll tell you one that I think might be the one that I pick for this. Uh, I can change it later though, just so you know. But I think I'll probably end up reading All of Our Demise by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. I read All of Us Villains in December and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun time. It was quite interesting. It has been pitched as kind of magical Hunger Games and I see that. I think it does have a lot in common with the Hunger Games and it does have um, quite interesting magic. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, I did feel though that the Hunger Games kind of got me a lot more emotionally than this one did. This one I was kind of more like interested in the plot to see what happened rather than getting super emotionally involved in the characters. But I'm really excited to continue on with it. I do want to see what happens and this is only a duology. So if I do read this one this month I will be finishing out this duology and finishing a series in the very first month of the year. So there, yeah I think this will probably be my pick but we'll see. I could change it. Nice, be nice. Be past. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay. Five. I don't remember. I, I think it's safe. I think it's good. 
Oh my, oh my gosh, I just landed right in the middle. Ooh, that is scary, that's a start, yeah, that's a start. Whew, I think I had a minor heart attack right there. Okay, our prompt is hardcover. I love these stars, give me easy prompts, I need that. Okay, we got another star and the prompt is hardcover. For this one, I might, you know, I might regret this later uh, because it is very chunky, but the book that I am picking is The Forgetting Moon by Brian Lee Durfee. I took the cover off because it was up here on my bookshelves on the like black and gold ones, and so it doesn't have the cover on it, but I'll put it up here so you can see what the cover looks like. This is the first book in uh, adult epic high fantasy series and it, it's a trilogy so it'll be the first out of three and Erin from Booked and Busy is doing a read-along of this series for January, February, and March and I really want to join in because it's a series that I've been looking forward to for quite some time and I actually don't know anything about what it's about. I have heard really good things about it from the couple people I know that have read this book, but I don't know anyone who's read the entire series, or at least I haven't noticed any videos of them talking about the entire series. So yeah, I'm just kind of interested in jumping into it. I feel like this is going to be a series that I really love, and I'm a little bit annoyed though because I have the first and second books in hardcover, and the third one, I don't even know if it was published in hardcover, so I can't get matching books, which if you know me, you know that I hate that so, so much. If you know how to get a hardcover of the third book in the series, please let me know because I want it. Okay, well at least we know we can't hit the black hole. Please don't hit the wormhole, please, 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 I'm begging you. Seven, I think that's good, I think that's good, woohoo. Okay, Ooh, nice, okay, a moon, and for that, a book by a female author. Again, doable, we can do that. Okay, our next prompt, we got a moon, which is great. The prompt was female author. And for this one, I decided to be nice to myself and pick a short book because my TBR is getting a little long and that makes me nervous. Uh, but I'm going to go with What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. This was a present from my friend Angela and I am really looking forward to reading it. I think it sounds so, so good. I did read Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher last year and absolutely loved it. I loved her writing style the kind of dark fairy tale feel to it and I'm kind of hoping to get similar vibes from this. I don't know what this is about at all but it's a novella, it's really short and I just I just think it sounds so good. Angela said she loved it and she does have really good taste in those kind of creepy darker books so really looking forward to this one and adding on a short book I think is going to be necessary because I have The Forgetting Moon and Briar of the Orange Tree on there already, and they're both super, super long. So yeah, this one's gonna be my nice to me book for the month. Okay. Anything but a five, literally anything but a five, and I'm gonna be happy. Vibes, no five, no five. And you've got to be kidding, you've gotta be kidding me. I, I, Mm. I need somebody who's good at statistics to tell me what the odds are that I could have any number but a five and I got a five. I, do, I don't want to move it. <laughs> I'm in denial. <laughs> no, no. Have I ever hit a wormhole twice in one game before? Someone who is like has a better memory than me have I ever hit a wormhole twice in one game before oh my gosh back to the beginning and I have to dodge three wormholes again what are the odds that I finish this TBR for this month and don't have to add another wormhole I think they're pretty small pretty slim here oh I can't believe I can't believe it we hit the black hole, we were so close. We were past the other two black holes. Oh gosh, okay, it is what it is. I didn't even put the lid on this time. So we're just gonna draw out, see what we get. Fingers crossed it's nice to us. Like I really need it to be nice. I need it, Let's see what we get. Okay. I'm not I'm stalling, I know I'm stalling, but I just, I'm so nervous about what we're gonna get. Okay, here we go, here it is. It's 
<laughs> I'm pathetic. Okay, what do we got? Wicked villains. Wicked villains. I don't even remember what series this is. I don't remember what series this is. I'll be back. Okay, um, I figured it out. I do own the second book, but I don't know where it is. So it is the second book in the Wicked Villains series, like I said, by Katie Robert. These are like very, very spicy Disney retellings that aren't really magical, aren't really fantasy, but set in kind of a alternate world. The second one I think follows like Hercules, Meg, and Hades. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it up here so you can see it. But these are fairly short, so easy to get through. I'm not upset that this was picked. This is totally fine because it's quite short. It's not something that I was really planning on continuing reading, honestly. I was kind of DNFing this series, but it's okay. It's short. I can deal with short. So yes, the second one is going to be the one that goes on here. I don't even remember what it's called, but this is what it is. That is the edition uh, from The Black Hole, and we are starting over. So let's jump into what is essentially role number one, but we already have a ton of books on the TBR. <laughs> I feel like at this point, I'm gonna, like, you know what? Bring on the wormholes, bring on the black holes. Let's do it. Five, hey, another five in a row. Mm. I feel like I have a thing against fives now. <gasps> one, two, three, four, five, double star. You know what? Fine. It, it, it just is what it is at this point. I need an audiobook. That is a book that features royalty. Since I read a lot of fantasy, this really should not be a problem. Okay, for our next roll, we got a double star and the prompts were audiobook and royalty. So I need an audiobook that features royalty and I decided to go with Queen of Shadows. This is the next book in the Throne of Glass series. And I know that it is fairly thick, but I really read these books fairly quickly. I feel like I've read all of these books in a day when I have read them, these thr the Throne of Glass series. I think this is book number four in the Throne of Glass series. I think this is number four in the Throne of Glass series. I am, actually, I do quite enjoy reading them. I feel like they're very easy to get through. Uh, they don't really take a lot of thought for me like it's just something that I can read and binge and enjoy and it doesn't take a whole ton of effort which I really like about them this one again is one that doesn't have the cover because it was on this bookshelf as well I, I think I took it off like a while ago because I did take this with me on vacation when I went and didn't end up reading it but I'm kind of in the mood for it I feel like this is going to be a nice easy bingeable read for me to put in between my thicker books like Prior to the Orange Tree and Forgetting Moon so even though it's fairly thick I think it'll be a really fast read plus I am planning on doing doing a 48 hour TBR mini readathon and I read a Throne of Glass book like most of these readathons. So I kind of needed to have one on my TBR so I can read it during that readathon if I'm able to. I might regret this because yeah, it is thick, but it's on there. It's happening. I have committed. Uh, I don't even know what numbers aren't safe. <laughs> my sense of trust is gone. Okay, seven. I actually think that's safe, I think. Ah, another, it's like it's a wormhole, black hole, or a double. I, hoo hoo. Okay, a book less than 300 pages that is self-published. Wow, okay, that might be difficult for me. We'll see, I don't know. Okay, this next roll we got a double moon and the prompts were a book less than 300 pages that is also self-published. I actually struggled with this one. It was pretty difficult for me to find a book that fit this prompt because I do read some self-published but a lot of times they are bigger fantasy books. So this was not easy for me to find a book that fit these prompts but I did, and it's actually one that I already own and I've owned for a long time. So I went with Into the Labyrinth, which is the first book in the Mage Errant series by John Bierce, I think is how you say it. I got this a long time ago. I'm not sure if it's still self-published or not. I would assume so, uh, but it definitely was when I purchased it. I know absolutely nothing about this book at all, except for the fact that it is short. It is 211 pages, so fits it perfectly. I think this is a trilogy of 
like shorter books like this. It says on the back, Hugh is, so far as he's concerned, the worst student at the Academy at Skyhold has ever seen. He can barely cast any spells at all, and those he does cast tend to fail explosively. If that wasn't bad enough, he's also managed to attract the ire of the most promising student of the year, who also happens to be the nephew of a king. Hugh has no friends, no talent, and definitely doesn't expect a mage to choose him as an apprentice at all during the upcoming choosing. When a very unexpected mage does choose him as an apprentice, however, his life starts to take a sharp turn for the better. Now, all he has to worry about is the final test for the first years being sent into the terrifying labyrinth below Skyhold. Actually, that sounds pretty awesome. I absolutely love magical school settings, and so this sounds like it's going to be something I'm going to absolutely love. So, thank you to the game for finally making me put this on my TBR because I've owned it for years and just never read it. And it's short, which I do need because, well, because you've been watching and you know why. Here we go. All I know is we don't want a two. Other than that, I am not sure. Nine. I really hope that's good. Like, I, I don't even know, but I hope. <laughs> ah! I'll take a sun if it means that I don't land on a black hole. Woo -hoo. Okay, sun prompt it is, and we get a book that starts on a page greater than one. That's fine. We'll make that happen. Okay, next one. We got a sun. Not mad about because it's not a wormhole or a black hole. The prompt is a book that starts on a page greater than one. Now, I know this prompt can be kind of confusing because I made it up and it made sense in my head, but it means a book where like the first numbered page or the first page where like the actual book starts on isn't one. And for this one, I chose The Witch and the Czar by Alessia Sanakova Gilmore. And I am so excited for this book. I love like this cover kills me. It's gorgeous. I love it so, so much. And this is actually my Patreon buddy read for the month of January. I cannot wait. I am so beyond excited to read this book. And it does start on a page greater than page one and I will show you. So see, here's the writing, the first page with like actual stuff on it. And then the first page, I don't know if you can see that, is four. Uh, so I know, like, I know some of you are gonna be like, oh, but it kind of starts earlier because it has this like part one thing. No, that doesn't count for me. It has to be like actual chapter one starts on it. So that's kind of how the prompt works. It makes sense in my head. I'm really sorry if it's confusing, but I can't wait to read this one. I hear it's kind of like a vengeful witch who is kind of taking out her anger on the czar because he is trying to get rid of the people that practice this kind of old magic because of the religion that has now grown up in their country that has like kind of moved into their country. That's kind of the vibe I get from it and I am really excited. I'm hoping it's gonna be kind of a creepy, cold, dark kind of vibe to it and have a really boss witch who is just vicious. That's what I'm going for here. I am so excited for this and I am really interested to see what my Patreons think as well. This one is gonna to be top of my list to read. I cannot wait. I'm not gonna count this time because I don't want to jinx myself again, uh, but if you would like to count, go for it. Okay. Roll number something in the teens. I don't know. <laughs> Seven. Let's see what we get. Okay. I can't believe this is happening again. <laughs> if you can't tell if I'm laughing or crying, um, ne neither can I. <sighs> okay, another wormhole. This jar was not pulled from in like a couple months. And now it's been used, I think this is the third time this month. Okay, well, I mean, let's see what we get. I got it. I can't let, I seriously almost can't make myself open it. If this is Wheel of Time, I might 
actually cry a little bit. I mean, I do want to continue with that series, but I just don't think I can do it. Like, I don't think I can add that to this TBR. And if I don't finish this one, I will have to add another black hole. I already have two extras. I can't do three. Okay. Whew. I need to relax. I'm freaking out. Okay. Let's see what we got. Gosh, read. Come on, folks. Oh, no. <laughs> the wormhole knew that I needed this and it was nice to me. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I, I mean, am I so happy? Should I be happy about this? I don't know. I'm gonna, I mean, I don't have to put this one back in anymore because, I mean, I don't, it's the last book, but am I really happy about this? So here we go, Mistborn Era 2. I am on the final book in that series, which is, of course, The Lost Metal. This was just published back in November. I did start this book already. So I have already started this book. I am not really that far into it, though. I think I am like less than 100 pages into this book. So really haven't gotten that far in. I am really really looking forward to finishing it. I want to finish this series. I've heard amazing things about this book. So this is set 300 years after the events of First Era Mistborn and we are in this world where there is metals that you can kind of use to grant yourself magical powers and it's set in a time that is kind of steampunky western where you have guns and trains and cars are just starting to come into play and I just cannot wait to continue with it because I really love the characters in this one. I They have grown on me so much and I absolutely love the banter and I just can't wait to finish it. But it's not that short. How many pages is this? 500. This is a 500 page book that I am now adding on to my TBR. I am, I am looking forward to this so much, don't get me wrong, but I did not want a 500 page book for this. The wormhole did me dirty on this one. I can't, yeah, I have to change my battery. I, I've been filming that long. Here we go with our next roll. I have lost count. I'll try, <laughs> I lost count. I got this. 10. <sighs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. How? How? Like, I don't think I could have this bad of luck if I actually tried. How is this but three black holes in the same game? Like this. Okay. I have accepted my fate. This Millennium Falcon is just struggling today. No, you're not on that star. <sighs> okay, I, I did. Did I really expect anything different at this point? This is just so... I don't... I... I don't even know what to say at this point. We're back to the beginning. Uh, the wormhole jar again gets to pick the book that I read. I am actually terrified at this point. And I put the lid back on. I was so hopeful. Why was I so hopeful? <laughs> okay, take your guesses on what series is going to pop up in this one. Put them down below. Let me know what you think is going to be this one's pick. I'm thinking it's going to be nice to me. I think it's going to pick... I think it's going to pick the next one in the Sandman series, which I would actually have to read the first one again because I just need to start over on that series. Um, or... It's going to be the Cassidy Blake series. Those are my guesses. I know, I don't, I would be okay with either of those. I'd be okay with either of those, okay. Okay, here we are. I've got good vibes on this one. I'm not even gonna hesitate, we're doing it. Here it is, what do we got? Oh my gosh, why do I keep doing it upside down? Is it, is that, no. Throne of glass? I just put a throne of glass book on here. Well, I mean, it is what it is, right? Let's put that back in there just in case I get another black hole. I shouldn't jinx myself like that. That was, I take it back. I take that back. Where's wood? 
Okay, here we go. Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass, the next book in the Throne of Glass series. At least I think this is the next book in the Throne of Glass series. I think it goes Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms. You Throne of Glass girlies out there who know, let me know if this is not the next book in the Throne of Glass series and I will uh, find the correct one because I do have the, all of the books in the series. Uh, again, this is a, I, th I think it's kind of like YA new adult kind of fan. I say YA, YA high fantasy follows a girl who's an assassin and we are in a world where all of the world has kind of been conquered by this one king and he is very sketch and doing some sketch things to keep his power. So I'm going to be continuing on with this series, apparently reading two of the books in this series. How long is this book? I hear they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So let's see, how long is this one? 689 pages. You know, it fools you. It looks like it's shorter than Queen of Shadows, but I don't really think it is. I think it's longer. 689 pages adding on to my TBR. I, I don't even think I'm going to be able to hold my TBR. That's how bad it is. I don't have a third black hole to put on the board. I would have to make another one. <laughs> well, I feel confident saying I don't want an eight. <laughs> That's all. 10! Woohoo, woohoo! Okay, this is gonna be the time. I can feel it. I can feel that this is my time. Okay. <laughs> and we get a moon. Just a singular moon. I like it. I need to read a new to me author. Doable. Done. Can do. Okay, next roll was nice to me. We got a moon. The prompt is new to me, author. And I am being nice to myself because I have to be at this point. I'm putting Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh on there. I've read absolutely nothing by Emily Tesh. I actually know absolutely nothing about this book but it's a novella. Let's see what it's about. There is a wild man who lives in the deep quiet of Green Hollow and he listens to the wood. Tobias, tethered to the forest, does not dwell in his past life, but he lives a perfectly unremarkable existence with his cottage, his cat, and his dryads. When Green Hollow Hall, oh, that was hard to say, acquires a handsome, intensely curious new owner in Henry Silver, everything changes. Old secrets better left buried are dug up and Tobias is forced to reckon with his troubled past, but the green magic of the woods and the dark things that rest in its heart heart. Both. Both the green magic of the woods and the dark things that rest in its heart. I do absolutely love magical wood settings. I think that's probably why this book was on my list to begin with. I really like the cover. I think it's beautiful. And it is a novella, which is the most important part of this book. This is going to be nice and short. It's something I can add on and get done very, very quickly. It's 105 pages. I can do that. I can do 105 pages. This is going on the TBR because I need it. I don't know if I'm even gonna be able to finish this with this novella added on, but we shall see. Okay, here we go. 11, big numbers. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh, you've gotta be kidding. Whew. Happy, but I think I had a minor heart attack. Here we go. Here we go. Another one. Like, have I had how many heart attacks have I had this game? I need a book that has an epilogue. The next prompt we got a sun. I'm not mad about it. This is a book that has an epilogue. And you know, I might regret this at some point putting this on here but I needed to add it on. I have to read this book this month um, because I just, I'm so excited about it. I have it kind of on my phone, it's hard to see, but it's going to be Tress and the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I'll put the cover up here so you can see it a little bit better, uh, but this is the first book in his four secret books that he wrote during COVID and he's kind of releasing from his Kickstarter. I did get, the year of Sanderson bundle in his Kickstarter. So I'm going to be getting the physical book, all the goodies, and I do have the ebook and audiobook already on my phone. So those are what I'm going to be reading. I know it's not short, but it's not long either. I feel like this is a very reasonable length book. I really want to read it. I haven't heard anyone talking about it yet because I don't want any spoilers, but I think it's going to be good. I'm really excited for it and I'm hoping that because I'm so excited for it, it will be a quick read for me. And hopefully I don't have too many more books to add to this TBR. Big numbers, big numbers. 
Come on, little dice. 10, woohoo! Ooh, I think that's a good one. Oh, this brings me so much joy. Sorry if that went like very, very high. <laughs> I pitched right there, but oh, I'm so happy. Okay. <sighs> okay, great. Love it. Let's move on to the next roll and just fingers crossed that this luck holds. Come on, big numbers. You got this. Big number. Yes. Oh, that's good. Oh, I'm so happy. Boom. Yeah. Yes! Oh, wow. Who? I don't think I've ever been happier to finish this game. I've never felt more sense of relief to hit that final spot. On ah! I don't think you understand how happy I am that we are finally done. Who? We're to the final spot on the... Ooh. On the board, we are going to now do the spinner wheel. For those of you who don't know, I spin a wheel with prompts on it. I have 10 seconds to find a book that fits that prompt or I have to spin again. Or if I get the same prompt as I got last month, which was adult fantasy, then I also have to spin again. I don't know if it really matters at this point whether I have to spin again or not because I, I don't think there is any way in the entire world that I finished this TBR in this month. I, I, I just don't see it happening. But you know what? We'll just keep pretending like it's a possibility. <laughs> okay, let's do the spinner wheel. Here we go. <gasps> Graphic novel. Okay, I got it. Sandman by Neil Gaiman. I, I mentioned during the wormhole that that was one that I was okay coming out, so I already had it in mind, so it was very easy for me to find it. I am gonna reread the first Sandman again. I think this is gonna be my third reread of it, but I just feel like I don't want, I wanna read these books fairly close together. I don't wanna spread them apart. Final book on the list. This is the final one on my stack and I'm actually quite nervous to lift it up. I see it over there and it's intimidating. I don't think I can hold it. I don't think I can hold the whole stack. Oh my gosh. Okay, here it is. Oh my gosh, don't fall, don't fall. Stay on there, you got it. Oh, <gasps> it doesn't fit in the frame. Here we go. Okay, can I list them off? Okay. <laughs> We have Sandman for Spinner Wheel Graphic Novel. We have Empire of Storms for a wormhole pick. We have The Lost Metal for a wormhole pick. Oh, I got, can't even see what's on the stack. We have The Witch and the Czar for a book that starts on a page greater than one. We have Into the Labyrinth for a self-published less than 300 pages. We have Queen of Shadows. Ah! Oh, shoot. Um, we have Queen of Shadows. <laughs> for a audiobook with royalty. Okay, taking off some books. I I accepted defeat. We have the next book in the Wicked Villains for a wormhole pick. We have What Moves the Dead for, oh, what was that? Oh, female author. We have The Forgetting Moon for a hardcover. We have All of Our Demise probably for a mood read. We have Monstrous for a wormhole pick. We have Priory of the Orange Tree for a book that special edition and unique magic. We have the Belgariad for a wormhole pick. Okay, what are the ones I don't own? We have uh, Tress of the Emerald Sea for a book that has an epilogue. We have Hellbent for a book box and we have, wait, that's it. That's all of them. Let me count, let me pick up the books that dropped. I have 16 books on my TBR for the month of January. I am really nervous. I don't know if there is any way in the world that I will possibly pull that off because some of the books are so long. That's a problem with playing the game and picking books as you go. You pick books that are long and you don't know you're gonna end up getting 16 books. We'll see, what if I pull it off? If I pulled this off, I think I deserve to remove both black holes. 
I won't because that's not the rules, but that's insane. 16 books and two of them are so long. I don't remember the last time I had this many books on my TBR. I think one time I had 19, but I think that I got quite a few shorter books on there. This is the like month where I've had the longest and most books on my TBR. How many black holes did I hit? I hit three black holes and two wormholes. That's out of control. That's ridiculous. That is so crazy. Five, five picks out of this stupid jar. But on the plus side, I guess it means that I will be continuing series because I am being forced to continue series. Okay, you know what? Let's take let's take some votes down in the comments. Do you think I will finish all of these books this month? You can be realistic and tell me I won't do it. I'm not going to be offended because I honestly don't know if I can do it myself. So let me know what books you're reading in the month of January. And as always, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me and see if I actually am able to finish this TBR, hit the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you'll be notified when I post new content. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.